superstitions very interesting word but this has really come to be part of our, the dna of an african culture did you know that almost to be african means to be superstitious if you're an african like me you might remember when we were growing up the things we used to hear that would scare us you know like they would tell you that if you hear a, an owl crying nearby your house you know that that very night somebody in the neighborhood is going to die you would hear somebody saying that I was going to work in the morning, I met a, a rat which crossed the road, so I decided to go back home because meeting a rat in the early in the morning spells danger and calamity and misfortune. And of course you can remember that as Africans, these things are not just things that scare us. They are things that we actually very much believe to be true and to be real. Because at the heart of African traditional thinking and philosophy is the fear of the spirit world, the supernatural. That for an African, all things have some demon or some spirit behind it that controls them. So when you see a rat, it's not just a rat. It has been sent by somebody, an enemy, or maybe an ancestor who died long ago and is grieved, or somebody jealous of your success. So things are not always what they look there is always some power behind them, which is why we live a lives of great fear, which is why an African is ever longing for somebody who can offer a solution to the spiritual powers that might be out to harm him or hurt him, and which is why the notion of a traditional witch doctor is at the center of our living and philosophy as Africans, that he becomes the man who not only understands our fears, but who is able to tap into the supernatural help us and protect us from those great fears and superstitions that we have and guarantee health and wealth and safety for all of us. Now, sadly, superstitions are not only limited to the African culture. They have come into our churches today. Today we have Christians who have believed Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord, but they continue to live like they are still in the African culture. Rather than come with the rats and the owls that we remember in the African culture, they have come with Christian symbols and rituals and traditions that they feel that they must observe or must do in order for them to be safe or to feel that God is at work in their lives. Like today, for instance, you will see people putting on amulets or they might even have a scripture on them, by the way. But what's the purpose of that amulet? They believe that without it, they are not very well protected or they could come into some danger or somebody could send them some witchcraft or some demons. Today you will see Christians hanging rosaries in their cars. Today you will even have some people putting Bibles under their pillows because somehow they believe that if they sleep on the Bible, demons will not attack them or they will not have <coughs> um, bad dreams or maybe somebody who wanted to hurt them or steal their property will not break in. So steal superstitions except that they have been Christianized. A few scriptures have been sprinkled around them. It sounds biblical and scriptural, but actually is not. But what does the Bible really say about superstitions and the spirit world? While we all agree that the Bible addresses the reality and the presence of the spiritual world, and indeed there is room for fear of demons and Satan himself, we must remember that Christians are protected from all this. That we who have believed Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and Lord have not only been delivered from the power, the penalty of sin, but we are very much protected by the victory that Christ has won for us on the cross and even more so through his resurrection. That the scriptures now tell us that greater is he that is in us than the one that is in the world. That in Christ Jesus we have become more than conquerors and not even demons, not even powers of darkness can harm us. It is very important that we understand that as Christians, we are now overcomers in Christ and therefore do not need to fear demons, do not need to fear rats crossing the path, do not need to worry about what owls are crying about or what parrots are singing because we are now children of the living God. Now, does that mean that demons and powers of darkness are, are no longer at work because we are saved? No, certainly they are still at work. But in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Instead of fearing the devil and his demons and the activities of darkness, 
We need to spend our time trusting, embracing, and worshiping God who has delivered us through his son Jesus. And as we continue to worship him, as God continues not only to assure us of his presence and protection, but as actually he reminds us of the safety and security that is found in him, then we are no longer living under the fear of demons and darkness and superstitious rituals and traditions. In Christ Jesus, we have become a new creation. As sons and daughters of the living God, we are not only protected from the powers of darkness, but we are guaranteed that we will be safe in Christ. And as long as we are under his protection, Satan has no authority or all power to attack us. So we can live with confidence and courage, knowing that Jesus didn't just die to save us from sin, but he died to protect us holistically and to keep us until the very end when he presents us before the Father in heaven.